Well, welcome back to part two of our canning series. So if you're new to my channel, first I wanna say welcome. I will be linking at the end the playlist to all of my canning videos, but for purposes of this series, this will be a three-part series and we're on part two today. So how much do I can? That is a really interesting question. I was trying to find some resources to share with you all, like maybe a chart that says, if you have 2.5 children, you need X pints of green beans, X pints of corn, so many quarts of this and that. And you know what the truth is? That's not how canning and planning really is organized and goes. But I do have a few resources I would like to share with you today, so stay tuned. So I'm sure you're all aware the cost of food and groceries continues to rise. The cost of gasoline continues to rise. And not only does that affect us traveling to purchase food, it affects transportation of food to a store where we purchase it and thus elevates the price. I think the pandemic taught us that things that we've always taken for granted as far as supply and demand we will always have toilet paper on the shelf. We will never be out of Lysol wipes. That is not true. We also have crop failures to deal with. A few years ago, we had a general U.S. rye crop failure. So for a while, it was next to impossible to buy rye flour. So I want to spend some time with you today just talking about some ideas that I utilize when I plan for my summer canning. So how do I determine what I'm gonna can and how much to can? So again, there are no real great charts that will tell you what your family will eat. So really what you're, where you have to start is you have to make your own plan. Look at what your family eats, or if you're like me and you're primarily cooking for one, what do I eat? If you're really not sure of your rate of consumption, you can do a few things. If you menu plan, which I'm not good with, you can look back at previous menu plans for say a one month period. That would be like ideal because that gives you the variety from day to day. You can also look back at grocery store receipts. So there are a lot of apps if you're scanning um, your receipts where you can go back and analyze what you've spent, where, and on what. So that might give you some good rules of thumb to start with. I think a good way to do it is look at if you're can already canning or even if you just have a pantry with store-bought items, what did you use the most of? So for me, there were things I ran out of that I was afraid I had actually made too much of last canning season. And I was out January, February, and it's now June, almost July. <clears throat> um, what items are you going to your pantry or even to the store to constantly refill? So are you always out of spaghetti sauce? Are you always out of carrots or green beans or whatever your favorite family meal vegetable happens to be? What sits on your shelf? So part three of this video, we're gonna actually go into my pantry. And it's time for me to do my semi-annual jar inspection. I do it twice a year. So I like to take everything out of each shelf. I do rewash my jars, I check the seal, I make sure that it is in the proper order with the newest food in the back, the oldest food in the front, of course. So I'm gonna share with you some of my mistakes that I made last year's canning, thinking I was doing it just right, but uh, have some overages. So once you've kind of gotten a basic plan, you wanna take that list and start estimating usage. So for example, if Friday night in your home is always pizza night and you want to can homemade pizza sauce and you know you're going to do that every single Friday for the majority of the year, and we'll talk about some exceptions, you might say, I need 52 pints 
of pizza sauce, depending on the size of your family. You might need gourds. Um, so that will give you some basics. How often do you eat pasta for your spaghetti sauce? How many vegetables do you serve with a dinner meal? How many days a week are you serving two or more vegetables? So that will help you to start to build on quantity. Um, the other consideration I want to remind you of is even though we're talking about canning here, you might want to think about what you can freeze or dehydrate, or do you need some items in that form? So let me give you an example. I love making Christmas jam in like November, December for gift giving as well as for eating. That requires cherries the way I make it. So some of the cherries that I will be uh, picking up very soon from the farmer's market I've pre-ordered will actually be frozen because I want those available when it comes time to make the Christmas jam. I don't wanna make Christmas jam in June, July because I have so many other things I'm going to be busy canning. Make a list of what you ran out of and when you ran out of it. So one of the things that I thought I made far too much of was sweet onion jam. And I actually have a video in my canning playlist on it. And I think I'm going to redo that video because I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna add my own little kick to it. But anyway, I thought I had plenty of onion jam. In fact, I was a little concerned that I made too much of it. And in actuality, come January, I was totally out because I found additional uses for the jam. It was quite delicious. I also thought I made way too much onion broth and I found that not only am I using onion broth for chili, I'm using it for soups. I'm using it to cook rice in. Anything that requires water, even just uh, boiling noodles, you can boil it in the onion broth to add additional flavor. So that was another item that I ran out of very, very quickly. So take stock of what you're constantly out of. Maybe you go to prepare a meal and you say, oh, I could make it except for I don't have this and that if you're not already canning. The fourth thing, you need to drop from your list unused items. And I have a few of those. <laughs> and when we actually do video number three where we're going through the pantry, I'm going to share just how much unused I have. So some things I made too much of, some things I didn't make enough of. And one of the things that I way overestimated was my homemade ketchup. So I love ketchup. I love it on eggs. I love it on fried potatoes. Any type of a sandwich or bean burger, I like it on there. I like ketchup on potato chips. So I thought I need a lot of ketchup. Well, I changed my diet a bit. I'm not eating as many eggs. I'm staying away from fried foods and anything high in fat. So I have way too much ketchup. So I won't be making any ketchup this year. So take a look at what you may have purchased or you may have canned that your family was like, mm, no thanks on that. And those things you can just drop from your list. I think the biggest question when it comes to canning is, I know what I need in terms of jars. So let's go back to the Friday night pizza night. So let's say you say, okay, at least 50 out of 52 weeks, I'm gonna be making pizza homemade, so I know I need 50 jars. But how do I translate 50 jars into the raw ingredients? So I'm gonna pause a moment here and I will bring you back to share a website and to share some ideas of how you can do some accurate calculations based on your consumption. So determining how much raw food, so to speak, you will need to either grow, harvest, or purchase, or combination of, to produce the desired number of jars can be a little tricky sometimes. So if you don't have the USDA Guide to Home Canning, <clears throat> This will provide you some information as far as looking at a recipe. Uh, let me just grab one here. Well, maybe. 
um, it will tell you basically how many cups of raw food that you will need to make a certain item like a jam, a jelly, a relish, whatever it happens to be. I have found that this isn't the most accurate because a lot of times it's very difficult to look at a bushel of tomatoes and tell how many cups is going to be in there. So I found this great reference and I'm telling y'all it is really wonderful and I will drop a link below in the description box. So this, this actually came from foodsafety.wisc, W-I-S-C for Wisconsin, dot edu. And if you can see, I don't know how well you can see here, it will tell you, um, for example, I just ordered 10 pounds of cherries. So it will say for a bushel, that's about 56 pounds. That will be 22 to 32 quarts if you can it unpitted. So a lot of that will depend on your headspace, the size of the fruit, etc. But it does tell you pounds per quart. So there's two to two and a half pounds per quart of cherries. So I can extrapolate then from there. And while 10 pounds of cherries sounded like a ton, that's actually less than five quarts if I just can them in say a sugar syrup or just in a liquid a water or even a juice. Now I'm actually going to be making cherry pie filling so that I can make cherry uh, crisp and cherry pies with it as well as freezing some to make my Christmas jam. So I will get more than four to five quarts because we're going to be adding the sugar, the water, the lemon juice, the um, pectin to it as well. So you have to take a combination of looking at the raw material weight and how much it will produce in quartz and kind of extrapolate what that comes out in terms of that particular recipe. But if you use those two resources, it will give you at least a ballpark idea. <clears throat> Number six, is there a formula for how much to can and store. So that was kind of like my question. And actually, there is no real exact formula. So what I would like to leave you with are some considerations. So there's a few of them I thought of because while your, your family may eat pizza every single Friday night that you make homemade and it takes you one pint of pizza sauce, how many times in the year will you not be having Friday night pizza night? So this could be holiday gatherings where you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving, you may not be having Friday night pizza night. So you may wanna take off a couple pints for that. Uh, when might you eat out? Are there birthdays or special occasions, Father's Day, Mother's Day, where you're not gonna be having Friday night pizza night? So you do wanna take those things into consideration. You also wanna consider, okay, let's move away from the pizza and just talk about canning, say, let's just say vegetables. What are you going to eat fresh from your garden or from farmer's market or wherever you source your food? So maybe a quarter to a third of the year, you're eating fresh and you're not accessing your pantry like you would during winter months when those fresh fruits and vegetables aren't available. So you may want to decrease your calculations based on fresh time eating. You also wanna think about what you're going to freeze or dehydrate because not everything has to be in a jar and canned. So back to the cherries example, some of my cherries will be canned, some of my cherries will be frozen, and that is going to save me space. When it comes to tomatoes, I do dehydrate some tomatoes and then vacuum seal them into jars for different uses than just say a tomato sauce or a tomato uh, chunk or quarter, however you can your tomatoes. Also think about what vegetables and fruits will come up later in the season. So a good example of that for me is apples. So in Ohio, like the prime time for apples is around September. So we've already passed 
the rush of peach season, cherry season, fresh corn season, perhaps tomato season. And we can defer some of those more fall crops or root vegetables to later in the season so that you're not getting so overwhelmed all at once. The final thing I want to remind you of is don't forget about gifting. So last year I made the Christmas jam for the purpose not only of eating but also gifting and I have gifted a lot of it. In fact, I don't think I have any Christmas jam left and it was truly the best jam I have ever made in my life. So on a day I want Christmas jam, hmm, I'm gonna have to wait until I make Christmas jam again. So don't forget about that. I also make a very decadent chocolate sauce that I do can and gift as well. So don't forget about items that you might want to gift and do a little bit later in the season as well. So my best suggestion to you is sort of make an annual canning plan. So depending on your area, you know when things come into season and you may want to spread your canning out a little bit. Do those early season strawberries first and those late season apples last. So I kind of divide my canning up into these categories and maybe this will be helpful for you. So the first category, and it's a big category in my pantry, and you'll see that on video number three, is jams and jellies. Now, I'm not a huge jam and jelly eater, but I do a lot of gifting, and I also can for my mother, who's no longer able to can. And she goes through jam and jelly like you would not believe. So that's category one for me. Another category for me is apples. I love apples, so I'm going to want to dehydrate some. Some goes into apple pie filling, apple butter, which I don't need to make apple butter this year, maybe apple sauce. So it's a little bit different than the fruit category because I make specific different things with apples. My third category is tomatoes. I eat a ton of tomatoes, so I juice them. I make pasta sauce, I make spaghetti, or I'm sorry, pizza sauce. I make tons of salsa because it's great for gifting and mm, I love salsa as well. And if you like marinara, you could make marinara sauce, but I also can a lot of just a quarter tomatoes to use in soups and chilies and for even macaroni and tomatoes. And if you've never had that, trust me, it's so good. It's better than mac and cheese. So that is category number three for me. Four would be fruits. So uh, whether that's a pie filling or just canned in syrup or in its own juice, fruit is another category. And then the final category is veggies. So I do a combination of purchase as well as growing in my garden. So that might help you get some categories I'm not a big canner of meals and meat. I'm not a big meat eater. I do like canning sloppy joe, but that's something you can do any time of the year. So don't crowd your canning season where things are time sensitive with items that you can do later. So making that annual canning plan, like I made mustard um, early spring before anything was available to can got that out of the way. It's on the shelf. I've got a year's worth. So I hope these suggestions for you have been really helpful. The final thought I would like to leave you with is don't overlook the concern of storage. So I purchased two uh, double-sided cabinets to store my canning in because I have a teeny tiny pantry. You all know that. And I also have added two very large highway storage shelves in an alcove <clears throat> in my first floor master that I don't use as bedroom. And that has afforded me a lot of space too. So don't can so much that you don't have any place to store it, or at least have the forethought of where can I add shelves? Where can I store this in a cool, dry place away from the light? 
If you've enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you'd give me that thumbs up and drop me a comment below. So far, what do you think of this series? Is it helpful for you? Are there items I haven't covered that you would like to see covered in video number three, which I will be recording on a separate day because I want to hear your feedback. As always, be well, be healthy, be blessed, and stay tuned for part three. Take care.